This is the fourth generation Kia Carnival introduced in 2020 and three out of every five people mover shoppers buys it. Good thing it is too. It delivers an appealing package of eight seater practicality in a vehicle design that looks quite different from your average multi-human transporter. But sister brand Hyundai has a fresh challenger and it too is aiming to appeal to big families or businesses with something that looks different from the norm. In this video, we're going to compare all key aspects of these two people movers. We're going to check out luggage capacities. We're going to find out what interior space is like for up to seven passengers. We're going to see if there are any nice practical touches. And of course, we'll find out what they like to drive. If you enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the Wheels channel because it's absolutely free. This is the Staria MPV and it replaces the long-lived IMAX that had stuck around since 2007. Where Hyundai's former people mover was based on the rear drive iLoad van, the company's new 8-seater shares a front drive bias passenger car platform with the Carnival and other SUVs within the Hyundai Kia group. So, two very different approaches to people mover design. You've got the Carnival, which is, well, it's like a wagon, MPV and an SUV all rolled into one, a relatively low roof line. I think it looks great and I think you can't underestimate that that's contributed to the success of the Carnival sales. The Staria, well, that's more van-like, just like its IMAX predecessor. Monobox design, like those traditional people movers of old. And actually, this really reminds me of those egg-shaped Toyota Tarragos of the 1990s. We've got 18 inch alloy wheels here and that's the same set of wheels that you get on every Staria in the range but this is the flagship model, the Highlander and this is also the flagship Platinum Carnival which comes with 19 inch black alloys. Either way these are two people mover designs that prove they don't have to look dull and dowdy. We have the perfect matchup here, the Carnival Platinum and Staria Highlander, and they're both range topping grades that are becoming increasingly popular with buyers. And both feature a 2.2 litre turbo diesel engine under the bonnets, rather than the cheaper V6 petrol. With on-road charges added, our Staria comes in at just under $70,000 and the Carnival just over that mark. Don't worry if your budget doesn't stretch to these trim grades, you can have a Staria for less than $50,000 before on-road costs, with the Carnival starting a bit higher. Auto tailgates are standard on upper spec versions of the Carnival and the Staria and they also include hands-free functions. Now, seven-seater SUVs or even eight-seater SUVs, when it comes to space behind the third row, they're always compromised. But that's not the case here with these people movers, although Kia and Hyundai do things a little bit differently. So if we take the Carnival first, they go with a lot more depth, width and also some extra practical touches such as the storage areas here and that includes a luggage net another one up here and then on this side we've got a 12 volt socket for the Staria as with the IMAX before it Hyundai goes with a low and very flat floor but it creates more capacity compared with the Carnival purely because you've got this extra height here and also a bit more length it's advantage Carnival, however, when the rear seats aren't needed. The 50-50 split seats in the Kia push fold down cleverly into the floor to create a whopping volume of nearly 2,800 litres behind the second row. Unlike the VW Multivan, none of the Staria's rear seats can be removed to turn it into a part-time van. Instead, you can only use levers to flip up the third row bench and then slide the seat backs forward. The result is useful extra cargo space, but significantly less than that offered by its rival. Right, electric sliding door, very convenient, as is getting into the third row, because all we do is pull this lever, more movement, slide that second row seat forward, and then come back into position like that. Okay, I'm just gonna put the headrest up there, make that a bit more comfortable. Yeah, look at that, that's, that's pretty good for leg room. I'm quite comfortable here. Look, the bench could be a little bit more supportive under the thigh but compared to many seven-seater SUVs that's not a bad space even for an adult. We get some storage down the side here, cup holder, storage area and USB, same over on the other side. You can get a nice little window here, it's on the small side but hey it does help it not feel too claustrophobic and in this model you even get a blind, very nice. Got speakers, 
that links into the standard Bose audio system in this Platinum model and it also ties into a front speaker so that helps you hear what your uh, dad or your friends are saying up front. Ceiling vents, sunroof, a little bit further forward here but still bring some extra light into the back. What I particularly like about this third row, certainly from a parent's perspective, is that you get Isofix points with matching top tethers for the outer seats. So that's really great. And there's only a dozen or so vehicles, including the Kia Sorento large SUV, that offer that for parents. If you're trying to get adults across this bench, well, yeah, fine in the outer seats, but in the middle position, a couple of reasons it's not so good. Yeah, look, it would just be way too squeezy whether you're sandwiched between child seats or a couple of adults and also the middle seat belt in here comes from out the ceiling and you attach it like this so it's still a lap sash belt but I just find that this part of the strap just interferes with the neck a bit so also electric sliding doors for easy access and also walk-in function one touch operation or one pull operation pull the strap here slide forward look at that that's easy access as well pull it back into position okay now I can tell you that he's just ahead that there's plenty of leg room for the person in the third row and for me also plenty of leg room this is really comfortable I find this bench a little bit more natural than the one in the carnival couple of other key differences as well no isofix points in here and not even top tethers so no putting any child seats in the back and yeah that's not uh, particularly useful for families but if you're getting adults back here it's even better because look middle seat there'll be plenty of room here even if you had adults in the outboard seats and you get a proper integrated seat belt much better storage very similar as well because we've got cup holders and a storage area here we've got USB points and this is repeated on both sides plenty of light coming in from the sunroof also got vents here blinds so just like in the carnival and a much bigger window than the carnival as well so you've got a, got a slightly better view out I'd say though this C pillar is still quite chunky Uh, let's check out the second row and we've got a button here to close the door or open it and look at that yes as you'd expect even more spacious in this second row and you can play around with the leg room lots of travel for this 60 40 bench again you could easily get three adults across here and we do have isofix points this time on the outboard seats and I can tell you I've put a child seat there and you can still access the third row quite easily just remember to put your child in the child seat after you've put the rear passengers in sunroof so it's still a large enough size that actually covers both rows here got another LED reading light here more ceiling vents and we get our own climate control it's on that side lots of practical touches which you always want whatever road you're in we've got dual bottle holders down here integrated into the doors very clever we've got a coat hook on each of the seat backs map pockets except that Hyundai's done something a little cleverer here on this map pocket there's like a little mini net version for putting your phone into and there's more down here on the rear of the console we got push out cup holders excellent couple of USB ports and even a little storage tray that pulls out Fantastic. Well, let's jump back in the carnival and see what its second row is like. Okay, so seat comfort, not quite as good as the Staria's for me. Still quite a bit of space underneath the thighs here, so it's not great for longer journeys and will be particularly noticeable by taller adults. Headroom, that's also more limited than it is in the Staria. The Staria, you know, benefiting there from its van style proportions. Similar 
practicality, I'd say. We've got integrated bottle holders down here, just a single one each side. We've got netted pouches, bag hook here, a USB port in each side of the front seat backs. Instead of pop-out cup holders like in the Star Air here, we've got them on the rear of the centre console. 12 volt port, that's something that's a little bit different to the Star Air, a little storage area under here. But there are quite a few things about this second row that I prefer in the Carnival. So, sunroof. Yes, same as in the Star Air, but this one actually opens so you can get some fresh air coming into the cabin for your rear passengers. The side window, more panoramic, less interrupted than you get in the Staria. That's a really nice view as you're driving along. And in this model, you also get a sunshade if you want it on really hot days. And how about this? The outboard seats come with fold down armrests. The seats here all slide individually and each of them have got isofix points with matching top tether points. So that is fantastic for families. And there's another neat trick to this carnival. So with the middle seat, if you've got your child in there, you can slide it all the way forward. So it's in easy reach of mum or dad in the front passenger seat. Or if you've got kids in the outer seats or adults in the outer seats, you can do this. Fold down the back and you've got a tray table, a couple of cup holders and a couple of smartphone ports. So that's really clever. Or, and I'm not finished there, you can pull a lever back there and you can lift the whole thing out and create a walk through to the third row. Safe exit assist features on both models, automatically locking the rear sliding doors if oncoming traffic is detected. The base Staria and lower carnival grades provide a flashing warning light instead. Four length curtain airbags are standard, giving each people mover better third row coverage than their respective seven seater SUVs, the Hyundai Santa Fe and Kia Sorento. The airbag approach differs up front, the Kia is equipped with driver's knee protection, the Hyundai features a centre front airbag designed to inflate in the event of a nasty side impact to prevent the heads of the driver and front passenger coming together. The Staria has yet to be crash tested by ANCAP, though eyebrows would be raised if it didn't match the maximum five stars achieved by the related Carnival. Right, let's check out the front cabins, starting with the Carnival. So, very car-like environment. Yes, you sit a little bit more upright than you would in, say, the Kia Sorento SUV but you feel like you sit quite low in the car and there's a cockpit feel because you've got this centre console here running into the centre stack dividing you and the front passenger and then you've got this wide dash setup that incorporates a 12.3 inch touchscreen and then your instrument dials here which are just analogue even in this top spec platinum. There is a fully digital driver display as you get in the Sorento coming for this car should be by the end of 2021. In terms of presentation, perceived quality, it's supposed to be high you know, it's look there's a wood effect here that feels quite nice, plenty of yielding materials here on the dash and the tops of the doors and you even got these leather panels that are stitched on the middle of the door, some shiny plastic which is premium or not premium depending on your perspective. Leatherette again for this armrest or console box top as it also acts as. Storage, well you've got your traditional glove box, you've got a couple of cup holders here in this clever slot for your smartphone. Smartphones can also go into this tray here which is wireless charging but only on this platinum model not lower spec models which is a bit disappointing. Another little tray area here. The seats, very comfortable, very good under thigh support, plenty of electric adjustment. Right, let's jump back in the Staria. Well, immediate difference is that you climb into the Staria where you step into the Carnival. So it's a much more van-like experience and particularly because we've got this fully flat floor here or at least virtually flat so you've got like a walkway through to the passenger side. In terms of design well it looks quite upmarket but in terms of materials yeah it's a lot of van like hard plastics in a lot of areas so more softer materials in the the carnival. A lot of 
gloss black plastic. Uh, you know, some people either like that or they don't. Storage, well, looks like it's even better than the Carnival. So one thing, you don't get any captain's chairs like you did on in the IMAX. So you haven't even got any armrests of any kind here or really on the door. Instead, you get this center console box, which acts like a sort of table in between the front seats. And you can open the lid here. And you've got a couple of cup holders in there or a very big stowage area. Center stack, that's also got some areas for storage. So down there, little area here. And this is your tray for your smartphone and charging. What else have we got for storage? We've got a glove box. Just a single one. You had dual glove, glove boxes in the IMAX. And the Highlander is also different to other Staria models. You get these extra multi boxes on the dash. So we've got one in the middle here, both lidded. Another one here. Loads of places for cup holders because we've already got the two that I've mentioned in there. You get another one for the driver here. And yes, there's a pop out one for the front passenger here as well. That's terrific. My favourite part of the storage though are the doors because they've got these four layers of storage. Small one up here like for a pen or coins, a couple of mid-row storage areas and then you've got these huge really super wide super fat compartments down the bottom which you could chuck all kinds of stuff into. We've also got lots of technology for this more modern people mover from Hyundai so we've got Driver aids good law. Most of them are very similar to what we get in the, the Carnival. Infotainment system, 10.25 inch display. A little bit smaller than the one in the Carnival, but it's still very presentable, good size, and naturally a very similar interface to what we get in the Carnival because it's the Kia Hyundai interface, which is very good. It's slick, it's responsive, very logical to use, as are the climate controls down here, which also get their own separate digital panel in here. A couple of things I want to point out as well. Passenger view monitor. Press this button and via this camera just up here, you get to see what the little monkeys in the back are up to in the second and third rows. And we also get a 3D surround view monitor by pressing this camera button here and in there and then you can play around with it and you get a digitized version of the Staria and you can spin it around and see what's going on with your surroundings in real time that's really cool and also for the Highlander model the top spec Staria that gets a fully digital display right ahead of the driver again very nicely presented gives you a point of difference over the Carnival as well because it's just like a pop-up display there's no conventional instrument binnacle the display also includes a video feed for blind spot system and that's useful because while you've got a regular blind spot alert in your side mirrors this B pillar does create a little bit of a blind spot when you're driving along but you know you get this fabulous view out with these tall super deep windows but I think that's enough about the practicality and the interior technology and all that it's time to find out how these cars drive We're starting off in the Carnival first because I always like to test the Challenger vehicle last in a comparison test and it's not that long ago when I actually last drove this very Carnival and liked it a lot and nothing's really changed. The driving position, if we just for now compare it even with Kia's large seven-seater SUV, the Sorento, the driving position is a little bit more upright compared to that but the seat is really comfortable it's very supportive good on the under thigh the bolstering at the side you can feel that keeping you in check when you're going around corners all-round visibility is pretty good You've got plenty of view through the rear window wide windscreen side mirrors on the smallish side but still plenty of vision in there just a slight blind spot here but you've got blind spot assist systems and you've got a surround view camera which is very handy for parking over the last couple of decades or so the Honda Odyssey has been the benchmark for the most car like experience when it comes to people movers and the carnival's not quite as good as that in that respect they're saying that the 
most recent generation of the Odyssey isn't as good, particularly when it comes to ride quality. It's become quite disappointing in that respect. The ride on the Carnival, however, is very good. It's very relaxing. The suspension is good at soaking up the lumps and bumps of suburban roads. Not always super quiet in the way it goes about doing that. The steering too is quite leisurely, so you'll be putting in more lock as you're going around roundabouts, for example. But it is smooth, just becomes a little vague around the straight ahead at higher speeds. We also like the turbo diesel engine in the Carnival. It's a little sluggish at very low revs, but beyond that, some very strong acceleration and it's also very respectably quiet for a diesel. The Staria shares its platform with the Carnival but despite that the Hyundai definitely feels more like a van to drive and that's exacerbated by the driving position really because it's much more upright, the seat feels a bit flatter. I'd say you need a bit of a longer cushion here. There's not a great deal of side support. Uh, overall, it's like you're sitting on the seat rather than in it. And it's a bit weird not having an armrest of any kind over here. I think even like a, a fold down armrest like you got on the IMAX would, or the Multivan would be really good here. The steering also slow as in the Carnival. We've got nearly 3.5 turns lock to lock here. So when it comes to roundabouts, as with the Carnival, you've got to put in more steering lock than you would in your average SUV or general passenger car. The Staria's suspension is softer than your average commercial van. It's not quite as good at soaking up bumps as the Carnival around the suburbs. I actually found the Staria improved when you had people on board. I had my family in it last night, so just that extra bit of weight seems to help the ride. And hey, this is a people mover after all, so I guess that's a, a good thing. It's also a 2.2 litre turbo diesel four-cylinder in the Staria. Not exactly the same specification as the engine in the Carnival. Outputs, for example, a bit down in the Hyundai, 130 kilowatts rather than 148, 430 newton meters rather than 440, but it doesn't make a great deal of difference. There's still ample torque in this Staria to get along at a decent clip, even with plenty of passengers on board. The torque is produced actually slightly lower in the Staria from 1500 RPM to 2500, whereas from 1750 RPM in the Carnival up to 2750, so a very similarly narrow rev range. And perhaps just noticing a, a bit more of the diesel clatter in the Staria. I'm not sure if that's down to simply having more interior space in the Hyundai or it's got a bit less sound deadening up front. The potentially big bonus of the Staria diesel for some buyers is that it comes with all-wheel drive. So this is a people mover you can take to the snow, for example. The trade-off, however, of that on-demand all-wheel drive system is that together with a vehicle that is simply bigger and heavier than the Carnival, fuel consumption is higher. 8.2 litres per 100 kilometres officially for the Staria versus 6.5 for the Carnival. That's not exactly a small difference. The Carnival remains our pick of the segment, though it's not necessarily a straightforward choice for all buyers between the Kia and its newly arrived cousin. Styling preferences aside, of course. If you want the biggest interior space, seats that can comfortably accommodate adults in every single position, or even the option of all-wheel drive, then the Hyundai Staria absolutely delivers. For parents looking to ferry around multiple kids, however, the Carnival has the smarter seating versatility with those clever second and third rows and all those isofix points. And that the Carnival drives more like an SUV is no doubt an influential factor in the Carnival's enduring appeal. And you get it on both front seats as well. The Starius is, oh no, another bloody traffic light. We need momentum, people, momentum. 